Uh, the proceedings this afternoon will be very simple. I'll ask the President to make brief remarks following the annual general meeting and the election uh, that were part of that an annual general meeting, followed by similar remarks from the Vice President, and then we'll invite questions from you, the media. So we'll begin with brief remarks from the newly elected President of the West Indies Cricket Board, Mr. Wycliffe Dave Cameron. Mr. Cameron. Thank you very much, uh, Imran. Um, <coughs> All the, the listeners, uh, viewers out there, thank you very much. Um, it is with very, uh, I, I'm very, very happy. I feel extremely blessed and to be leading this August body this afternoon. Um, as you know, the election process um, has been a, a long one. Uh, I traveled through the length and breadth as my good friend Andrew Mason would say from Kingston to Georgetown <laughs> to ensure that I was able to address uh, the, the concerns of our stakeholders. Um, and as Emmanuel and I take over the West Indies Cricket Board reigns, we take it over with very, very lofty goals, I think, in our minds, but also with the understanding of the, the, the reason we are here and what everybody in the region is looking forward to us. Um, in my manifesto, I spoke about improving, uh, building on our immense talent, increasing the revenues in the sport. We spoke about participation and about uniting the region through cricket. And I certainly believe that this thing called cricket and West Indies cricket in particular is very, very passionate to all of us. Um, and I like to say from the, the, the sweep on the street to the prime ministers of the region, um, this is very, very passionate to, to all of us. And with that, we take on this very huge task of building the West Indies team, taking it back to the top where we are, we're all accustomed to, understanding the challenges, dealing with the, the challenges that come being small territories uh, with, with, with you, reduced revenue opportunities, but we take it on understanding and knowing very well that we will be innovative and creative. Um, and as my good friends say, we will use every strength that we have to be able to try and get West Indies cricket back to, 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 to the top. Um, the, the, we had an AGM earlier today. Um, we disclosed our financials, and those will be published very, very shortly. But the essence of it is that we reported losing $14.8 million over last year. Now, it is very important that when I say that, that I put it in context, because we made $15 million a year before. Um, and so our, our revenues, our income um, are cyclical. And one of the things we'll be trying to do is to see how we can even that out over the next seven years, as we've now just signed a new rights deal. Uh, our, our income will be and, and expenses will be like that. We, uh, I think our budgeted expenses are now somewhere in the region of $42 million. And so there's a huge challenge for us to be able to cover those and to be able to return, a, a, have a return, and also to always ensure that the development programs in the region can be continued. Um, I, I'm not sure that there's anything else major at this point I'd like to point out. Um, but um, I'll turn it over to Mr. Mr. Khan. <clears throat> I'll just add to what the President say, said in mentioning that the um, revenues of the WICB are cyclical because that is in relation to our media rights revenue, which is our major source of income. And as you are aware, um, the media rights revenue, when certain countries tour the West Indies, are significantly more than others. So I add that just by way of explanation sure. to the remarks that he made. Thank you very much, President Cameron. I'll now ask Vice President Nanton to make similarly brief remarks in the 2020 format as established by the <laughs> President. Perhaps we'll just move the microphones over. We'll just switch. We'll just switch. We'll switch. Gracious as usual. <laughs> Vice President Emmanuel Nantra. Thank you very much, Mr. President and uh, Chairman Imran. Let me, at, at this point, extend uh, my heartfelt thanks to Dr. Gillian Hunt 
for a tremendous job he did working and building Western's cricket. Othon is my friend. He has been my friend for a number of years. He is, uh, to me, uh, a hero, one from the Windward Islands that I'm proud of. He presided over the board in difficult times. He did the last six years, three terms. And uh, now the baton has been passed on. And I'm fortunate to be part of the team chosen to advance the development and advancement of West Indies cricket. Let me also thank his wife and family and people of St. Lucia for the job that they have done. I think uh, they have worked very hard. They have done a tremendous job and we are very grateful for the support that they have provided him with, Dr. Hunt with, because that support enabled West Indies to turn the corner, move things along, because he took it over at a time when it was exceptionally difficult. In accepting the battle, what I believe uh, I have been offered, or we are offering, is in fact fresher legs to continue the work and one day we too will pass on that battle with fresh to fresh legs to continue the development and the advancement of the game and sport that we all love and cherish so much in the West Indies. I want to thank the members for the confidence entrusted in us and thank the directors with whom we have served with over the last Dave has been on the board for about 11 years and I have been there for maybe around 8 or there about. We only thank the, the directors who work with us and who express their confidence in us and urged us to go forward and help move Western Cricket in the direction that we the people of the Caribbean would like to see it. Of course, in accepting the battle, we understand that we are going to be on the sideline. We are the major cheerleaders of a team that we want to go on and dominate the world and we need the support of one and all. I got several messages today saying that the election is over, the work is now beginning. And in beginning that work to advance West Indies cricket to where we want it to be, it is incumbent upon me to reach out to all of the Caribbean in every nook and every cranny, in every community in every capital, in every, every back and village, to really be with us. Today going forward is not on what happened in the past, it's not about who won or who lost, it's about bringing the people of the region together, mobilization, strengthening and getting the support of all. Of course, we know ourselves, we know the Caribbean, and we know that there are many times that we will disagree, but what I beg and ask of you is that when we do, Let's agree to disagree. And let us realize that we can only get to where we want to go, where we want to reach, if we work together. La main à la main, as we would say in Dominica and St. Lucia. Hands in hands. We extend our hands, we extend ourselves, we make ourselves available to the people of the region in carrying what most likely to all seems to be the greatest passion of the Caribbean civilization. I am honored and privileged to be here today and I am honored and privileged to lay myself at the doorsteps of our Caribbean people for the advancement and the development of our Caribbean community. I thank you very much. I thank the media. Your role is going to be as important as mine in advancing this West Indies cricket. Listen, a lot of times good things are done and nobody knows of them. The slightest mistake I highlighted too often. I implore you to dig deep within and bring out the best that you can, bring out the best that you have, to demonstrate to the world that we, the Caribbean people, can be the very best that they can be. Your role today is as important as my role, and maybe even more so. And I implore you, I put myself at your feet, I lay down on your, at your doorsteps and I ask of you, I implore you, to work with us as together we try to move our Caribbean civilization. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll what ask for a resumption in seats. Thank you, Vice President Nanta. Very passionate presentation indeed. And as usual, I should 
mention for those of you who are listening to <laughs> Vice President Nanton for the first time. We'll now invite questions from the media. Uh, firstly, we'll invite questions for President Cameron, and we'll start with Hayden Gill, who is very anxious. Um, to go. <laughs> for the benefit of those joining us online, we'll ask you to identify yourself by name and media house um, before you ask your question. Hayden Gill of Nation News. Therefore, protocol established, no need to identify myself. <laughs> first of all, let me congratulate both Mr. Cameron and Ambassador Nathan on your recommendation to the top business of the WICD. Uh, from your opening remarks, Mr. Nathan, it's clear that you are truly a diplomat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, this has been a very intense campaign. Um, as you said, you've traveled from Kingston to Georgetown, and the final result of 75 suggests, you know, how close it was. In the end, um, what would you attribute your success to me? What do you think the final analysis convinced shareholders that you were in command of all Well, I think um, Ambassador Nanton said it earlier in, in his presentation. Um, I've, we've been on the board for 11 and 8 years, respectively. Um, through that time, <clears throat> I would have chaired an, a number of the committees um, and would have worked tirelessly. Uh, I think the directors, the majority of the directors, were persuaded um, f from even before the election started. And, and I think enunciating a vision for West Indies cricket um, and the passion that you'd have heard um, from Emmanuel Lantern says to everybody how we feel about West Indies cricket and the reason why we were offering ourselves. Um, I think it, it, is, it is very important um, that the way the media treated this, this campaign I think was very, very important. It is historic um, that we've had some, so an election like this. And I, and I told most of my friends that whether I won today or lost, I think the fact that I was able, I was brave enough as some of my friends say, to actually challenge Dr. Hunt, who has served West Indies cricket um, really, really very well. I think something like 33 years. Um, and, and some of it as vice president, six years as the president. Mm -hmm. We owe him a lot. We, we, we thank him for his service. Um, but I think when they looked around, they thought I provided a, an, an option that could really unite the region and take our cricket forward. And I think that, that is what did it. You mentioned that there are a number of challenges, huge challenges ahead. We wouldn't want you to go into all of them, but what is your, your first order of business? Well, the first order of business is I've campaigned on uh, strengthening our territorial boards. Um, it's, a, it's a focus that we've never had. It, it is not against the strategic plan. It is one of the pillars in the strategic plan. But I would like to make it the focus. And the reason for that is that I feel our cricket is disconnected. Um, I feel our players are disconnected from the territorial boards, from the clubs, once they've, ma they've made it to the West Indies cricket team. And we need to find a way to get the clubs and the territories being responsible in assisting us as the West Indies Cricket Board. And I make the distinction between the board, West Indies Cricket Board, and West Indies Cricket because all of us here are stakeholders in, in that. And I think we need to find a way to get the, the, the territories, get more persons participating and being responsible for West Indies Cricket and not just the board of directors. Marshall. Um, Marshall, what is it you see? Now, you would now become one of the youngest presidents being had at the WSE. Historically, do you think this is significant in terms of how you feel the agenda? And if age had any factor in how you can make it? Well, I, you know, I, I love to, I love to charge Hayden Gill with that. He, he was the first one who highlighted our ages. I actually didn't say anything to him. Um, he asked me how old I was, and then the, the, this age thing has been, um, you know, promulgated throughout the campaign. But I don't believe that my age. I think my age is an advantage, but it also could be seen as a disadvantage. What I do bring is an, an experience, having been a part of the board for 11 years. Um, I'm, I feel honored that the, my directors, the shareholders, would give me an opportunity at such an, a young age. Clearly that speaks for something, um, and my job is to ensure that I can deliver uh, on their promise. Further questions? Hayden Gill? Before I ask a question, I mean, the reason for asking the age was just about 
Like I said, and I think Imran tried to help me out, we have a cyclical um, balance sheet, cyclical revenues because of how the tours, the pair of, pairs of tours appear. Um, the future tours program, the next period is seven years. Um, over that time, we only make money, and, and, and we've been at pains to explain this to, to, to you, the stakeholders, how the incomes are derived now. We only make money when we play India and England at home and from receipts from ICC tournaments, okay? So all these other tours that we, we entertain, which we have to do because as a full member of, West, of, the, of the ICC, we have to entertain all of these tours. We don't make the kind of revenues um, that's able to, to, to deal with our expenses. So we have to be creative. It is a cause of concern, um, but we have a media rights deal for the next seven years there are projections from the ICC events, but there's still a huge shortfall. And, and I think that is part of the reason why we may have been um, asked to, to, to take on the mantle of West Indies cricket at this time. What we do say is that there are a lot of opportunities. I think at this time we have very little, I think maybe only two sponsors from the region who are part of West Indies cricket. And I'm hoping that with this new leadership that we will be able to get back to Corporate Caribbean, that's one of the things that I believe I bring to this board. I have relationships in, in the Corporate Caribbean, um, being myself in finance in Jamaica, and stretching across the region. And I'm hoping that with that, those networks, those relationships, we'll be able to, 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 to um, erode th those deficits going forward. Further question. In hearing you speaking about the development of cricket, and you also spoke about um, getting involved with corporate Caribbean for sponsorship and so forth. One of the things that just came to me was like the under 17 um, competition. The gap between the under 15 and the under 19 for development purpose, purposes. Um, is there any possibility of seeing at least an under 17 competition being introduced by the WFC? Well, we, we, we had an under-17 program last year. I think we are challenged this year, and I, and I don't know if we have time now to still have that tournament. Um, but, you know, part of the problem, Mr. Carter, and I like to say is, we, we, because of how we've managed a lot of our programs, uh, they've not been sustainable. My, my whole view, uh, and we've had this discussion with, with, with the leadership, is we need to do things that are sustainable. So if we've introduced under 17 program, we, we shouldn't be thinking about what are we doing this year or next year. And so whatever we do, we need to ensure that they are sustainable, that we have the revenues in place over long term, not to be going back on a program that we've started, but to be building on them. Um, and, and, that's, and that's my view. Um, and I think the, the under-17 program is something that it, it is needed. There was a long discussion on it this morning in the, in the AGM, and hopefully we will try and have it. If not this year, certainly we want to have it back as part of our programs going forward. Marsha. Well, the targeted assisted program is actually already spent, so to speak, or allocated. Um, a big part of it is the coaches program, um, which we are, we've actually been looking at with UTEC in Jamaica. So a lot of that has already been allocated for, for that program. <coughs> Andrew? Yes. Seven. 
Well, it, it depends on what format you're saying. I think we're number two or number one in T20. We're number two in T20. Uh, and like I said, Andrew, it, it has to be a coordinated effort. And I think that has been the problem with us. We, we, we've always been looking at the West Indies cricket board rather than a West Indies cricket structure that's going to take us back to number one. Um, and what I'm saying to you is that we need to have agreements, we need to have a structure in place for, for our players from the time they're, they've entered clubs, they've played for their countries, and they've played for West Indies. What we have now is a system um, where we have what we call, we're free agents. The players are all free agents. We have a system, even at the, the academy, that we've, we've, we've set up. We're spending numerous sums on the academy. But, but think about it. In, in commercial sphere, we're giving scholarships to our players, but we have no relationship, no agreement with them. And so I think whatever we do, we all need to start having a responsibility and a relationship with our players. So how do we get there? The, the Spartan in Barbados has to be responsible to its players who come through Spartan. The WICB has to be responsible to Spartan when that player makes the West Indies team. And WICB needs to be sending back resources, rewarding them for doing the good work. Rewarding Barbados, rewarding Spartan, so that that work can continue. So that other persons can get involved in building West Indies cricket. And it's not just about the 14 or 18 directors who sit at the West Indies Cricket Board that is continuously asked about how we're going to get us back there. Um, once you have that structure in place and everybody is responsible and accountable, then they will ensure that Kirk Edwards goes into the nets every day and does what is required to ensure that when he plays for the West Indies, he's in, in, in the best shape to perform. I, I, I'm a bit nervous because I noticed that the president touched me when he said 18 directors on the board and currently we have 17. So, Mr. <laughs> president, I am available. <laughs> Ricky, you have a follow-up question? Yeah, um, the question I needed to uh, ask. The previous president, one of the things he was uh, he mentioned at a previous press conference is that uh, harnessing a relationship with the people. Uh, what is your position on you know, trying to get even a closer relationship with, with the West Indies Players Association? That, that, that um, what the president, Dr. Hunt, would have stated would have been a position of the board of directors and remains a major, major part of, of our own campaign. And, and, you, and I've said that the, if we don't have a relationship with our players, the players are the most valuable assets. Any innovation with, in terms of increasing our revenues will involve the players. And so, yes, major, major um, part of, of West Indies cricket and going forward is having a close relationship with the players and the players' association. I'll just follow up to that question there. Only yesterday, a significant judgment handed out um, in the Trinidad Labour High Court over the MOU CBA. Um, you know, with that judgment, how do you see the relationship now between the WIC and the um, uh, Hayden, I think that's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great opportunity um, for, for Emmanuel and I to be taking over at this time. Um, and it's an opportunity for us to sit down with Weeper and chart the way forward. Um, and that's exactly what we intend to do. Further questions for the President? Any questions from Mr. Nanton? Yeah, or did he say it all in his uh, yes, in passionate the presentation? In opening remarks. <laughs> Thank you very much um, for coming to this press conference, those of you who are present here with us. And thank you to those of us, those members of the public and the media who would have joined on the internet via windyscricket.com. We thank you sincerely and we look forward to doing this exercise with both the President and the Vice President on a more regular basis. They've already committed to making themselves more available to the public and to the media and I will ensure that they are held to that and that they return to Barbados and throughout the region when the opportunity presents itself um, to meet with the media in the respective territories. So thank you very much, Mr. President and Mr. Vice President. Thank you very much to the media and the public. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.